Shalom. Giving all praises to the Heavenly Father, Yahweh Bahasham, Yahweh Shai Bahasham, Rachakurash. Double honors to the apostles, the bishops, and the elders at Great Millstone who rule well. Peace and salutations as always to the elect. And real quick, I wanted to do this lesson, uh, basically proving, all right, that in the New Testament, the Gentiles that are associated with salvation, all right, which would receive, you know, uh, grace, you know, over judgment, you know, um, and mercy over judgment are speaking of Israelites. You see, when you go into the scriptures, you know, you may see a scripture that says Gentiles, or it may be talking about actual heathen, which the word means ethnicity. You have 18 nations in the Holy Scriptures, all right, but the Lord is only dealing with one, the ethnicity, all right, of the Hebrew Israelites, the chosen line, all right, stemming from Adam through Seth, all right, going all the way up, you know, uh, to Noah, our Faxad, and as you follow the lineage, it goes all the way to our forefather, Abraham, who had Isaac, Jacob, who had 12 sons, all right, and that's who the promise is associated with. All right. And as we go into prophecy, we will be scattered, you know, uh, broken. And we know that our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shah Mashiach, was the one, all right, who fixed the fall. All right. Who basically was sent, you know, to bring everything back together. All right. And that would be the mercy and grace that we needed as Israelites. All right. Um, you know, which that ties us to the promise made to Abraham that we're going to get inheritance rights back. You know, to the Holy Land, the Garden Eastward in Eden, all right, returning to paradise. All right. Now, when you get Isaiah, the 42nd chapter, and let's read run one through three, God's promise concerning his servant. Who's his servant? This is speaking of Yahweh Shai. All right. It says, Behold, my servant, whom I will uphold, mine elect. Okay. And we know in the book of Peter, it, it tells you that Yahweh Shai is elect and precious, all right, in whom my soul delighted, all right. There was, there was a point in the scriptures where the Most High himself had to come and correct Peter, all right, at the transfiguration and say, Behold, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased, okay. I have put my spirit upon him. He shall bring forth judgment to the Gentiles, see, and ultimately the Gentiles are those who will receive the mercies of David, all right, who will be accepted back to the Most High, you know, outside of the, the sacrificial system, all right, in the first covenant, which we break and which we were all guilty of. It says, he shall not cry nor lift up, all right, nor uh, lift up nor cause his voice to be heard in the street, all right, and this is speaking of Yahweh Shai, okay. Ultimately, he spoke his father's words. He didn't speak of his own heart. He came to do the will of his father. A bruised reed shall he not break. All right. Our people were bruised and afflicted. All right. And ultimately, he had compassion on him. All right. And the smoking flax shall he not quench. All right. And ultimately, those who accepted of him. All right. Were healed through him. He shall bring forth judgment unto truth. All right, he shall not fail nor be discouraged till I have set judgment in the earth. All right, and the owl shall, shall wait for his law. All right, and ultimately we know through him the law, statutes, and commandments are going to be established in the earth. But right here we see verse 1. It says that, Behold my servant whom I uphold, mine elect, whom my soul delighted. I have put my spirit upon him. He shall bring forth judgment to the Gentiles, okay? And ultimately, also, verse 3, the bruise reed shall he not break. He didn't come, you know, to ultimately, uh, you know, commit judgment at that time in the form of the destruction that we know he's going to bring, okay? He was very patient, okay? And, you know, he dealt righteously. He, he brought forth righteous judgment. Now, as you see here, I have put my spirit up on him to bring forth judgment to the Gentiles. You see that in verse 1, right? So let's go to the book of Matthew, the uh, 12th chapter. And really, we should start at 1. All right, so that you can get the uh, understanding and the background. Because as you read in this story, 
All right, when you go to ju the jump to uh, verse 17, it says, all of this happened that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying, behold, my servant, whom I have chosen my beloved, and whom my soul is well pleased, I will put my spirit upon him, and he shall show judgment unto the Gentiles. See? And we know that this word Gentile, when you get it, all right, it just means the ethnicity, ethnos, all right? And when you go into the volume of the book, all right, the ethnos, all right, the multitude of individuals of the same nature or gene that is associated with salvation, all right, the tribe, nation, group of people whom the Heavenly Father associate with salvation, all right, are the Israelites, okay? Now, to bring it all home, when you read this story, let's see who these Gentiles are pertaining to. All right. This is the book of Matthew 1 and 10. At that time, Yahweh Shai went on the Sabbath day, all right, through corn, and his disciples were hungry and began to pluck ears of corn and to eat. All right. But when the Pharisees saw it, they said unto him, Behold, thy disciples do that which is not lawful on the Sabbath day. All right, we're going to read this in the NLT. All right, so you can, uh, you know, so we can read through it and you can get it in more of a uh, modern English, all right, term. Because again, you know, the uh, King's English or the uh, Old English sometimes can be hard to understand. All right, but you do have to be careful with the NLT, GNT. Sometimes they go off. But let's read through this um, in the NLT. Matthew. 12 and 2 but some pharisees saw them do it let's read one again and about the time yahweh Shah was walking through some grain fields on the sabbath his disciples were hungry so they began breaking off some heads of grain and eating them but the pharisees saw them do it and protested look your disciples are breaking the law by harvesting grain on the sabbath okay that was even looked down upon now we're living in a time where jake they're saying you can have sex on the Sabbath. Anyway, Yahweh Shai said unto them, Haven't you read in the scriptures what David did when his companions were hungry? He went into the house of the Most High, and his companions broke the law by eating sacred bread. All right. The uh, basically, and we, we always bring that story out. All right. Basically, David, you know, he was on a run from Saul, and he had to go up, you know, to the temple and beg the high priest for some bread which only that that bread that was available was only lawful to eat by the high priest they would change it out every sabbath and eat it along with the sacrifices right so only technically the sons of aaron was to eat that bread according to the law right but david ate that bread so yahweh shot cut him all right how david went into the house of the most high he and his companions all right who were at war with him who were on the run with him broke the law by eating the sacred loaves of bread that only the priests are allowed to eat, right? The priests are only allowed to eat that. And haven't you read in the law of Moses that the priest's duty, all right, in the temple may work on the Sabbath? Or in the Sabbath, it requires you to do, uh, you know, which the scriptures say you should do no work on the Sabbath. When you look at the priest's duty, they had to do a lot, all right, for the, uh, you know, the, uh, rituals that we performed in the temples the the priests had to light things like you know light uh the uh, keep the, the the lights burning you know burn incense which can be looked at as work all right so yahweh Shah is cutting them here all right as they're trying to condemn him and his followers about the law he's cutting them and we see the same thing happening in these times all right it says and having you read in the law of moses that the duty of the priests in the temple work on the sabbath i tell you there is one here greater than the temple but you would not have con condemned my innocent disciples if you knew the meaning of meaning of this scripture i want you to show mercy not offer sacrifices and our people are still under that sacrificial system mindset and they're trying to condemn us through these technicalities in the law meanwhile they're breaking the law see and yahweh shai is the one greater than the temple because he's going to build a greater temple via the elect the true third temple that these men are saying in the kingdom we're going to need a physical standing temple to have a connection with our power and do sacrifices all right which sacrifices as far as the uh rituals you know the holy days will be done all right 
And we don't need a temple to do those sacrifices. All we need is an altar. All right, but that goes over uh, these men's head. It says, then Yahweh Shai went over to their synagogue where he noticed a man with a deformed hand and the Pharisees asked Yahweh Shai, does the law permit a person, all right, to work on a Sabbath by healing? They were hoping he would say yes so that they can bring charges against him. See, these scribes and Pharisees, these wicked, you know, priests and chief priests, they were always trying to trip Yahweh Shai up in the law, right? And he answered, if you had a sheep that fell into the well on the Sabbath, okay, wouldn't you work to pull it out? Of course you would. All right, see that? <laughs> and how much more valuable is a person, all right, than a sheep? Yes, the law permits a person to do good on the Sabbath. See, Yahweh Shai, ultimately, you know, he, he's, 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 he's showing us how to judge rightly. Okay, we can, you know, try to be as technical as we in a, you know, want to be in the law, but it's about right judgment. All right? And we're in a situation where we can't be perfect according to the technicalities of the law, which is another lesson I need to do as particular people believe that they can be justified by the first covenant standard. So we're going to see as we get into the scriptures. It says, "Then he said to the man, hold out your hand." So the man held out his hand and it was restored just like the other one. And a Pharisee's called a meeting to plot how to kill Yahweh Shai. So instead of rejoicing that this man is healed, they're trying to use the law to put this man to death, Yahweh Shai, right? And then it says, but Yahweh Shai knew what they were planning, so he left that area and followed, all right? And many people followed him. He healed the sick among them, but he warned them not to reveal who he was. He didn't want a high reputation. He understood that he was just there to serve. But it's right here, it says, this fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah concerning him. Okay, look at my servant whom I have chosen. He is my beloved who pleases me. I will put my spirit upon him. All right, and he will proclaim justice to the nation. Now, the justice to the nations is really, as you read in the King James, justice to the Gentiles. Okay, but when you read this story, all right, this is speaking about Yahweh Shai, all right, justifying his men, the disciples, all right, outside of the condemnation of the law. So even in this instance, his disciples will be likened unto Gentiles because what? They receive the mercies of David, which what are the mercies of David, all right, where you can be condemned according to a technicality in the law, all right, what Yahweh Shai does is bring forth what? Justice and judgment. To the matter all right which is far better all right and look what he told them here again in verse 6 let's read it in the king james matthew 12 and 6 but i say unto you that in this place is one greater than the temple all right which is the temple is where you know the, the we we offer those sacrifices the temple is where the law issued forth and according to that first covenant okay the, the sacrifices that you know were, were needed to bring us back to the most high for the on the day of atonement you know all of those things were done via a temple right now we don't have a physical standing temple all right so yahweh shah is letting you know his authority over those uh, uh you know first covenant regulations and his ability to forgive sins his ability to justify someone right but i say this unto you there is one greater than the temple here but if ye had known what this means all right, if you understood the importance of the Most High sending me, okay, and my position and my authority are right, given to me of the Father, as the scriptures say, the Son of Man hath power to forgive sins. Let's get that real quick. And they didn't like that. Okay? So right there, who are those Gentiles talking about? It's talking about his disciples who were justified outside of the law. See? See? This is the book of Matthew. Let's see here. Matthew 12 and 10. All right. But he, let's see here. But they, that ye, man, that ye may know, Mark 2 and 10, that, but that ye may know that the son of man hath power on earth to forgive sins. He said of the sick and palsy. All right. Which the nation of Israel is sick. And we need healing. 
okay? And as, as much laws as we can keep, you know, which we do to the best of our ability, we need another justification uh, system, which that comes through Yahweh Shai, and we receive that through grace, all right? Now, it's another one I, I was just looking at, okay? Forgive sins. Okay, Matthew 9 and 6. Yep. So, yeah, Yahweh Shai has power to forgive sins. Right? So, right here, he's saying there is one greater than the temple. All right? Right here in front of you. Since everything that they, you know, uh, believed in was predicated upon the first covenant standard, the temple. And we see these arguments back here today with these individuals, right? But Yahweh Shai is saying, I tell you that in this place, there is one greater than the temple. All right. Now we're going to read this. I just thought to get this is uh, John Gill's, you know, breakdown of that, you know, uh, uh, scripture right there. Matthew 12 and 6. There is one greater than the temple, meaning himself, who was the Lord and proprietor of the temple and in human nature, the anti type of it. Yeah. The temple all points to him. The law all points to Yahweh Shai, the high priest, everything, the sacrifice it all points to Yahweh Shai. All right, see John 2 and 19. Yahweh Shai answered and said unto them, destroy this temple and in three days I will raise it up, meaning his body, okay? And ultimately it says, um, it says and was infinitely more sacred than that temple. Something greater referring either to the human nature of Yahweh Shai in which the Godhead dwells bodily, Okay. And so infinitely greater than the temple or to the health of his disciples, which was in danger through hunger. They needed to eat. Here it is. They needed to eat. They hungry. They, they on a mission traveling, you know, the, the, you know, doing the work. And here it is. It's the Sabbath day and they, they have to eat. So in that, in that instance, all right, they ate. And there's these particular, you know, men who were law, 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 wanted to condemn them. But Yahweh Shah's justification, just like through David's uh, situation where he murdered a man. All right. He did some things far more uh, wicked than just picking corn on the Sabbath, which the scriptures say you should not do that. Uh, you should not do work on the Sabbath, which right now. All right. This week when the Sabbath comes up, not every individual is not going to be able to not work. There's going to be particular brothers and sisters that will have to work. So how are they going to be justified? Because if you break the Sabbath, all right, you, you, you're cut off from your people. Let's get that real quick. All right. Real quick. Ex Exodus 31 and 14. You shall keep the Sabbath. Therefore, for it is holy unto you. Everyone that devoured that the surely shall be put to death. Whosoever doeth any work therein, that soul shall be cut off among his people. So right here, if we want to boast in the law, which you're boasting in the first covenant, when you're boasting in the law, you're boasting that you can meet that measure right here. How do you get around this condemnation? It's through Yahweh Shai. But then you'll want to lean on Yahweh Shai for that. But 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 then you want to condemn us. See, this is why. Let's go back here and finish it off. OK, they were in danger through hunger. All right. Or to the ministry of the apostles, they have to eat, which by satisfying nature, they were more capable of performing either of which was more uh, of more a moment than the sacrifices of the temple. So it was more important that they receive mercy for the you know benefit of the ministry. All right. Then you use the technicalities of the law to condemn them. Yahweh Shah's argument that is that if the temple and the service of it excuse the priest for blame from blame in doing the things in it on the Sabbath day, which otherwise might not uh, be done, then how then much more might his presence. All right. Who was greater than the temple excuses disciples from blame in this action of rubbing and eating the ears of corn, which was done to satisfy hunger and render them more capable of performing their ministry function, all right, of which was more important than the service of the priest. There you go. So right now, what's more important to the nation of Israel that we ultimately had a, a, a temple in Jerusalem and go and, 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 and 
you know, offer sacrifices and do those duties or we do these, these videos, go out to the highways and the byways. The highways and the byways, all right, and what we're doing in this time is more needful. And uh, again, the justification of us doing these things comes through the most high God's son, Yahweh Shai. See? So, so right here, this was all done to fulfill what was written in the book of Isaiah. All right? Matthew 12 and 18, Behold my servant whom I have chosen, my beloved in whom my soul is well pleased. I will put my spirit upon him. All right? And he shall show judgment to the Gentiles. All right? So not only did he justify his men outside of the technicalities of the law, all right? He was healing, all right, Israelites, all right, on the Sabbath. See? And they wanted to accuse him. But instead of rejoicing that these brothers and sisters were being healed, they were looking for a way to justify, I mean, uh, to, to, to justify putting them to death according to the technicalities of the law. So that's, that, 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 that right there was heavy. And the water to the priest are, all right, he uh, brought this to me. All right, Shalom. Hopefully I'll edify it.